So in these decades as it's happening, so there's, there's this going on, you know, slowly in the background, but then on a practical level, you know, you've got to eat, you've got to put a roof over your head, mm. you've got to put gas in your car, you've got to write jokes. How do I make money? Well, not even that, but where do the two overlap? Like you have this, you know, philosophical understanding. That's not uh, philosophy so much. If, if you get into physical stuff Physical like understanding, whatever, but you have a cognitive understanding, mm. but then there's also like everyday life stuff, getting along with people, mm -hmm. you know, making it through the system. Mm. Where's the overlap in those two things? Okay, when we get into that area, you're dealing with areas that are outside the realm of scientific methods. So this is where I trans transcend into areas like um, metaphysics and phenomenology. I just like cause and effect, um, uh, synchronicity, serendipity. Um, are those things measurable? Uh, they are not. Right, so this is what separates me from a lot of pri specifically scientists or other different experts is because I kind of have an objective view of things, right? And I don't exclude any ideal concept from out of the equation. And these areas we're dealing with is sort of empirical. In, in, in the, within the scientific method, it, 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 the premise is centered around, well, one aspect is the inferential data and theoretical data. This is empirical because synchronicity is sort of contingent on a sort of uh, uh, empirical subjective evidence right? that you cannot validate for someone objectively because synchronicity sort of derives from not only the cause and effect, the manifestation of intentions, but there's a relationship between something that's intrinsic and something that's ex extrinsic. Mm. So this is what separates synchronicity from, I'll say, coincidence. Coincidences, coinc coincidences is when there's a correlation between mutually exclusive events or scenarios. Right? Synchronicity and ser um, serendipity is kind of the same, but there is a, there's a sort of synergy between what's intrinsic and what's extrinsic, and with what gives that sort of um, subjective attribute. So you want to know what I do when I'm not doing science? I'm sort of in these areas, studying these sort of areas. Like I, I read um, uh, the book, hope I'm not speaking too much, The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot, which is an intriguing book because there's so many aspects of the brain that's a conundrum. And it becomes demystifiable when the holographic theory is used as an analogy or a metaphor to demystify many aspects of the brain, which deem as a conundrum. Prime example is when you fra fragment a hologram, it still remains a whole, right, in its tiniest fragment, right. There was a study done where they ran rats to, through a maze. I can't um, regurgitate this verbatim for verbatim, but I remember reading this from the Holographic um, Universe book, and certain aspect of the rat's brain was extracted, and yet the rat, the rat was still capable of retaining his memory prior to the removal of certain parts of the brain. So this postulates that memory is sort of dispersed across. It's, 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 to put this into perspective is when you start looking at the universe from a holographic perspective, the night, our perceptions begin to change because then we start looking at, is this, um, is this a solid illusion? So I kind of, Outside the realm of science, I'm sort of in this area. When I have these strange occurrences, I try to put it in perspective. Do, is, do, do, does the thoughts manifest? But then I study a number of different um, improbabilities. I study a number of different improbabilities. And over 90% of high improbabilities seems to be predicated on the same sort of merits, where the manifestation was the precondition or the prerequisite prior to the intention. So how could thoughts manifest itself if manifestation was, a, was, a, was, was the precondition? It's equivalent to the, remember the MacGyver uh, television show in the 90s? Yes. Right. MacGyver, all his, um, when he um, eluded, eluded his enemies, right? These were actual scientific stuff he was doing, right? But he had all these external concepts, all these external objects to facilitate his needs. In, the, in, these, in these, like how I met you on Hollywood Boulevard, it kind of felt 
the same. So when you have a manifest, like for example is I got into this dialogue with this guy in Mulholland Drive. We're looking at the uh, uh, panoramic view mm -hmm. of uh, Universal Studios. Yeah. And uh, you know up there, right? Mm -hmm. and we got into the same sort of discourse. And he kind of, um, he's this huge advocate of uh, coincidences and random occurrences and giving enough uh, improbable, giving enough um, um, chaos narrative will occur inevitably, right? Fine. So he put me to the test. He said, I'm testing you. He challenged me, right? Just instantaneously challenged me. He said, I want to see a big colorful bird in front of me right now, right? Which I felt subjugated to something that I am incapable of, of, of manifesting. So I felt a, a, like a fool. Again, it's adolescence, so they walk away very condescending, dancing and singing. You'd not believe what this guy did. You would not believe what this guy did. What did he do? He reached into his jacket, he pulled out a big colorful bird, it's a whistle, and he blew it in a very poetic format, and he walked away dancing, just like, remember in Dead Poet Society with um, Robin mm -hmm. William, and the kids sang and coming out of the cave, and he danced away walking, right? I thought you didn't want to talk about movies. But you see what I mean? Yeah. But, and they walked away completely jaded. I said, wow, there's a bird. It manifested. So the manifestation was, was prerequisite. There was preconditions met before the intentions. So then based on these, all these improbabilities, you see where mani manifestation is the precursor before the intention. So then you begin to question something much bigger. OK. Is there some sort of external divine intervention that seems to be kind of? No, we could get into quantum uh, mechanics and subatomic particles and we'll that sort of stuff. We'll have to save that for your third hour on we the show. We have to save that for the third hour. Is that an I hour did. already? We're almost done. 